Hello humans, today I have something absolutely special for you. Christmas has come early. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to make smoky patty jollof rice without the need to burn half of your rice. In the past, we have traditionally burnt our rice to get that smoky flavor, but no more. You do not need to burn that rice. You will get the smoky flavor. People will think you cooked it on firewood and you will not waste your rice, okay? If you're interested in seeing how I made this, keep watching. First, we're going to start with making our stock. I think goat meat is the absolute best for making a jollof rice, goat meat stock. So that's what I'm doing now. To my pot, I've added in some goat meat, some seasoning, some salt, uh, garlic and ginger powder as well. And I'm just going to mix that together and allow that to cook in its own juices for about five to 10 minutes. Doing that step helps make the meat itself very flavorful. So once, that's, once that is done, I've added in enough water to cook my meat thoroughly. And I'm just going to stir that around a bit and then cover it and cook it for another 20 to 25 minutes. Till the meat is nice and tender and the stock is very rich and flavorful. Okay, so once my stock is ready, I'll set that aside and then we can get cracking with our rice. Now in my sink, I've added in a bowl and I've poured in my rice with lots of water. Now you do not want to skip this step. This step is absolutely important. You need to wash your rice thoroughly several times. Don't get tired of this. Five times, even ten times if possible. The reason for this is you do not want your rice to be clumpy. If you look in the sink, it looks as if I poured milk in the sink. Obviously it's not milk. It's the starch from the rice. You need to wash it really thoroughly several times. If you don't, your rice will be very clumpy, very mushy, and it will just not have that nice single grain that is traditional or that is desirable when we're making patty jollof rice, okay? So if you get tired of washing several times or you don't have enough time, you can actually use boiling hot water. So to that, I've added boiling hot water and I'm going to use a spoon to move it around because I'm obviously not going to put my fingers into hot rice water. I don't want to boil my fingers, okay? So I'm just going to mix that around to get things moving and then I'm going to pass it through a sieve. So I'm passing it through a sieve because I don't want too much water, I don't want too much moisture in my rice uh, because you will see that when we are cooking the actual rice itself, we're not going to use a lot of water to cook. We're going to steam it rather than boil it in water, okay? So once I've passed that through the sieve, we can start on cooking the rice. So to my large pot, I've added in some oil, and then I'm adding in some uh, tomato paste and some onion. Now, this step again, you should not skip it. Now, I know I'm saying that you shouldn't skip a lot of steps. Party jollof rice, delicious party jollof rice does not happen by magic. There are so many techniques to it that you need to follow to get the best results, okay? So you're going to fry the onion and tomato paste for at least 10 minutes, if possible 15. Keep stirring, keep frying around because you don't want your tomato paste to pass its sour taste to your rice. Frying it will help get rid of most of that sour taste. Once you're done with that, you can then pour in your blended onion and pepper and tomato. So that I've added in my spices. I've added in curry powder, salt, thyme, and seasoning. I also added in garlic and ginger powder. It's not essential that you add garlic and ginger powder, but I like the flavor, so I usually add it. You can leave it out in yours. So we allow that to fry again for another 10 to 15 minutes. It's very important. Keep stirring at intervals so it doesn't burn. And then I'm going to stir that. And when I'm happy with my base, I'll taste the base as well and make sure that everything tastes as it should. Then it will be time to add the rice. Okay, so once the base is done, I'm going to add in my washed rice. If you notice in the bowl, there's no water in the bowl. That's because I drained it. We don't want excess water in this rice. We're only going to use enough moisture just to keep it from burning. But you do not want boiled colored rice. You want steamed rice so that everything will be nice and tasty. So I've coated the rice in my lovely jollof base. And once I'm happy with that, I am going to pour in our meat stock. So that's the meat stock that I made from earlier. I'm pouring that into my rice and I'm just going to add a small amount of water. 
you want just enough water to cover the rice you don't want too much water in that rice okay very important so i'm just going to move that around and mix it a bit and when i'm happy i've added in some bay leaves as well which adds a nice flavor and then i'm going to cover it up and seal in all the moisture with foil this is also an essential step because it helps trapping all the moisture so you wouldn't need to use a lot of water skin won't escape so after about 30 minutes i opened it up to check <laughs> purely because my family members were hungry and they kept hurrying me up and say oh is it not ready but it wasn't ready when i looked at it so i decided to cover that up again and allowed it to cook for a further 20 minutes now the reason why it took so long was because i was cooking it on very low heat you need to cook it on low heat so that it doesn't burn if uh you don't mind it burning by all means please do uh, cook it on high heat but it means you will need to add a lot of water which we are trying to avoid okay so after about 20 minutes i came back and it was nice and done so i just put in my wooden stick to fluff up the rice a bit just to make sure that uh, you know i it wasn't compacted and as you can see already the rice is well coated in my lovely jollof base and lovely jollof sauce it was tasting delicious at this point because i had a little bit of a taste at that point okay so i added in some onion and uh, some people add in um tomatoes some people add in both but I like uh, the taste of fresh onion in my jello fry, so I just added that in and I mixed that and it was lovely. But we're not done. This is the part where we make the smoky flavor, okay? So I switched on my little cam gas and I put in there a small uh, piece of coal. Now, once the coal starts to get white, you know that it's ready. You just want to heat it up for about 5-10 minutes till it's nice and white. So into my rice, I put in a folded piece of foil and I put my hot coal on top of that. Now this is where the magic happened. I poured in a little bit of oil on it to create that smoke. And then I put the lid over it and I trapped it in there. Now, because I didn't want any of the smoke to escape, I used a piece of foil to cover that little tiny hole in the pot, okay? So after about five minutes, five minutes is enough for you to smoke this quantity of rice. I opened it up and the aroma was divine. I'm telling you, this is a game changer. When I gave it to someone to taste, they did not believe that I did not cook it on firewood. It is absolutely delicious. As you can see the rice, look at it just pouring. Nothing is clumping together. It is just nice and individual i love individual jollof rice i don't like it clumpy look at how gorgeous that looked and then i served it with nice plantain and then of course i had to serve it with a massive piece of chicken because why not absolutely delicious absolutely gorgeous this is just something that you should definitely add to your christmas menu now i'm going to taste that for you and let you know of course it was delicious because mrs kush cooked it i hope you try this method very soon thanks for watching bye